Hey, year 1005 mathematicians, Mr. Herman here with lesson 2, exercise 4b, finding angles from side lengths. So from the previous exercise for 4a, we were given a length and we were given an angle and we could find one of the side lengths. In this case, we're going to be finding a specific angle from the side lengths. And generally, it's two side lengths that are given to us. The learning goal is to see the relationship between two sides of a right angle triangle to then find one of the angles. And the success criteria is to use the inverse function on your scientific calculator to find an angle inside a right angle triangle given two sides. The inverse function is a option you have not seen before prior to this. Um, but before we get into this, we got to remember that uh, trigonometric function. So hopefully after um, answering some questions from 4a, you should get used to these functions. We know that if we have to use the sine of an angle, um, we get the opposite side um, of the right angle triangle and divided by the hypotenuse. Now in 4a, an angle was given to us and at least one of these two sides. Um, same with cos and same with tan. But now we're going to be using a new function called the inverse function. The inverse function. And what the inverse function is, is uh, what it does, it, it finds the angle of a right angle triangle, any angle within there, given two sides, any two sides of that triangle. Okay, so what I'm going to do is instead of explaining it, I'm going to actually jump straight into an example right here. And this example here, sorry, uh, wifey just asked for a cuppa, very nice of her. Um, find the value of, remember this is theta, theta it just means unknown angle. Find the value of theta in the following right angle triangles rounding to two decimal places in part B. So part A we don't have to round, but part B we do. So the first thing we are going to do as normal is we're going to label what we do know. We're going to label the sides. In this case here, the angle has not been given because this is what we're looking for. But the two sides in relation to this angle and this 90 degrees is the opposite. So O for opposite and the hypotenuse because it's uh, directly opposite the 90 degrees. So H, the hypotenuse. And in this case, for O and H, if we go back to our trigonometric function, functions, we should know that we have to use the sine of the angle. But then we run into a little bit of a problem um, because what we're used to doing in exercise 4a is writing down that the sine of the angle that was given, so some number, is equal to O over H and at least one of these letters were given. But in this case, we don't know what that angle is. But what we do know is the opposite is one. And the hypotenuse is two. Remember it's O over H in this case. So one goes on top and two goes on the bottom. And this is where we um, use our uh, inverse function. So after we've labeled, we're going to substitute what we put in. We've got to put in what we know. Put in what we know. But this is where it changes. Step three is when we apply the inverse. Apply the inverse. So to write what this looks like, obviously we're trying to look for the angle. The angle theta is going to be equal to, now this is where the new terminology comes in. I'm gonna put it in this red color. I'm gonna write sine because obviously we're dealing with sine. Now why mathematicians chose this terminology, I'm not too sure. They could have put I and V for inverse. Um, they could have put um, some type of symbol. Instead they use a negative one. Um, not too sure, I've never really questioned it, but we will just take it as it is. And all we're doing is 
when we apply this inverse of um, sine to a half, this option just means, hey, if we're given this ratio of one over two, what's this angle? Now, if you remember from the introduction video, we know that when one of the sides is given and the hypotenuse is double that, the angle has to be 30 degrees, regardless of what these two numbers are. If one, the opposite is a number and the hypotenuse is double that, it has to be 30. And just to double check that, let's have a look. So on your graphics calculator, scientific calculator rather, we're used to the sine, cos and tan, which you can see here. But now what we're going to be doing is we're going to use the shift button. So press shift and then we're going to press the sine. And what will happen is that sine and that little negative one comes in and it says, hey, you want me to get an inverse? What inverse do you want me to get? Now you can do one or two options. You can put it in decimal format. Um, that only works when you kind of know what this uh, if easy fraction is in decimal. But just out of habit, put the fraction button in and make it one over two. Now, when you close that bracket, when you close the bracket, just make sure that after you put the number two in, you don't put the bracket like that because that's gonna put the bracket around the number two. You don't want to do that. In this case, you want to go across, then close the bracket. And when you press equals, it will give you the required angle for that right angle triangle. So in this case, a theta is equal to 30. And just make sure you put the little degree symbol there. And that's all there is to it. You label, you put in what you know, and then you just apply the inverse. Uh, and I find this one much easier because it's always just gonna be an inverse when you're trying to look for an angle. You've just gotta determine what trigonometric function you have to use. So for part B, that was part A over there. For part B, what we're going to do is first going to label. So in relation to this angle, we have the adjacent because it's right next to it, A, and the side that is directly opposite the hypotenuse, which is H. So in this case, we'll be using the cos. So A over H is the cos. The cos of the angle, which is what we don't know, is A over H or 1.5 over 2.5. And then we just apply the inverse function. But in this case, it's going to be cos inverse because we're using the trigonometric function of cos. So the cos uh, inverse, so you don't say cos negative one, you just say uh, cos inverse of 1.5 over 2.5. And then you just figure out what this is. And remember, we've got to round this to two decimal places. So let's put shift cos to get the cos negative one, not cos inverse. Put the fraction button 1.5 on the top, 2.5 on the bottom, and then close that bracket. And you should get 53.13 degrees, 53.13 degrees. That just means that if this adjacent side and this hypotenuse side is 1.5 and 2.5 respectively, the only angle that this can be is 53.13 degrees. Now, you've been working with some pretty basic examples. Let's look into a real life um, context example right here, which was taken straight from the textbook. Now with this, we have a question here. Now generally, depending on the question, sometimes a question will give you a diagram, sometimes it won't. You've just gotta be very, very careful if it doesn't give you a diagram with how you draw this diagram because one little slip up and you might get the wrong answer, okay? And this right here is one of the trickiest things to do is to visualize what's going on based on the question. So in this question here, a long straight mine tunnel is sunk into the ground. Its final depth is 120 meters and, and the end of the tunnel is 100 meters horizontally from the ground entrance. I'm gonna underline that. 
find the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal correct to one decimal place. Okay, so there's a lot of information to dissect here. If you're given a diagram, really simple. If you haven't, you'll be like, where do I start? Okay, a long straight mine tunnel is sunk into the ground. So we know that this tunnel, now I know I've got this diagram here, but I'm gonna show you how this was formed. There it goes straight down. So if we picture this as our ground level, there it's gone straight down and its final depth is 120 meters. So we have 120 meters. Yeah, okay. So we can assume that this top part here is the ground, right there. And in the mine, it's straight down, the mine is here, okay? So this is all we know so far from the first part. Um, and the final depth being 120 meters. And the end of the tunnel is 100 meters horizontally from the ground entrance. So horizontally from the ground entrance, the ground entrance, it can't be here because that's where the mine is. So the ground entrance has to be here. Now you could um, put an angle, a line that goes that way because technically you will be correct. It doesn't specify which way it goes. So I can go the other way, but to keep it consistent, let's put it here. And this is saying this tunnel is 100 meters horizontally from the ground entrance. So this here has to be 100 meters. Find the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal. Find the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal. That would be talking about this angle here. And we know this is to be a 90 degree. So it says find the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal. This can't be this angle here, it has to be this angle within here. And this is what our unknown angle is. And now we've got pretty much all the information that we need. We're gonna find this angle. So let's first label. The signs that we do have is the opposite sign, so O for opposite, and the adjacent sign, A for adjacent. The hypotenuse has not been given in this case. So the side opposite the 90 degrees. The trigonometric function that uses O and A is tan. So the tan of this angle, which is what we don't know, is O, 120, over A, 100. Remember, so ka toa, toa T O A. So OA, 120 and 100, so 120 over 100. We're gonna apply our inverse, so our theta in this case is going to be equal to tan inverse, so tan with that little negative one, and then just in brackets, 120 over 100. Grab your calculator, shift tan, fraction 120, 120 over 100 and this is going to be equal to ah now you see I did that error where I put the bracket on the bottom easy to do so let's clear that shift 10 try that again 120 over 100 making sure we go across then put the bracket so in this case the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal is 50.19 degrees. 50.19 degrees. So our angle is 50.19 degrees. Now, because this question has been give, given in worded format, we have to answer this question in worded format. So we have our little three dots, which stands for therefore, and therefore just means using the calculations that we have before. Therefore, and we'll just answer it, the angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal. So the angle, the angle, let me keep going back up. The angle the tunnel makes with the horizontal. The angle the tunnel makes, with the horizontal, with the horizontal is 
one nine degrees. And that's all there is to it. This concludes lesson two, exercise four B for your log sheets. Let's grab the log sheet out. The questions that you are required to do is 4B, page 275, foundation and standard. You'll notice there are no advanced questions, but if you want to try the trickier questions, which is uh, beyond question six, you're more than welcome to. It gets to the spectrum of worded questions and looking into um, real life context. Um, so go ahead and, and challenge yourself if you feel pretty confident in the advanced questions, but if not, you can stick to foundation and standard. This concludes exercise 4B. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.